you don't. There you go. Uh, welcome to the risk meeting, April 7th, 2022. Uh, I was not here at the last risk working group meeting. Uh, I was in Spain at the Baturgia anniversary and working on chaos software stuff. But you attended the meeting, Sean. I don't think I. Yes. Okay. You I attended didn't... it from the Spain. Did I, really? I think that Sean might have been blacked out the whole week. Sorry, this is on the recording now. But yeah, you were yeah. also in the other meetings. And Isn't I think really? you, you might have been in like a state of mind, or maybe black was a hard term, but like you weren't, you were present, but you weren't retaining. It's like your RAM was turned off. Yeah. I. Oh, no, sorry. Your RAM was working, but not your drive. Well, yeah, that would have been the day that I was, that I had just arrived. So I would have been, that would have been like at the very, very end of my ability to pay attention. So I, I do remember, I guess I do remember some of this. I just wasn't sure because it looked very similar to the meeting before that. If it was, yeah, I was in this discussion. In fact, oh, wait a minute, March 10th, I made a comment. All right. Well, I didn't put myself down as an attendee, which also further made me believe that I was not there. But apparently I, I um, did not. Okay. So currently I was there. So we'll fix that in the notes. And wow. I think I'm just in so many chaos meetings at, and there were only, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. Cause I do remember discussing Z score. And for some reason I thought we had must've discussed that the other meeting, but clearly not the case. Uh, it's, I mean, I have talked <coughs> about that in several meetings, so it's quite possible. Yeah. Well, I guess I was here at the last meeting, David, and uh, but I, I have limited recollection of that. Now, and now that Sophia says I was there, I do remember being on a bunch of calls late at night, the Thursday I arrived in Spain. So <laughs> this must have been one of them. But I think, you know, I was up a lot the night before on a plane and I was just trying to stay awake until sundown. And I uh, guess I accomplished that a little too well. So Interesting. Interestingly, um, I, I'm usually the person who talks about Z scores, but I don't think I was at that last meeting. No, was I? Uh, it was uh, David was not there. It was um, yeah. Uh, what is her name? So we ended up working. Here. Yeah. So is this where we, we ended up working on downstream dependencies? Was it this meeting? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. I do remember yep. working on downstream dependencies. Yep. And, and we were uh, kind of getting to the end of that and yep. we come back to it. So, um, I guess David, for oh, your, David your let me put the links, let me put the link in there for you, David. Sorry. Okay. We were yeah, well, uh, discussing which, which link <coughs> downstream dependencies. Yep. So we had raised the question of how these source were calculated as a way to ensure that we were doing something that different and trying to better understand what was involved in the Z-score valuation. Um, and then just to make, I don't know, I just, anytime there are similarly minded metrics out there, it's nice to discuss them and know how ours are either related, similar and or different. So we were mostly just discussing what we thought went into them, but without actual specific, if you know how it's calculated, that might be nice to know. I didn't know if that was sort of a proprietary I thing or something that can be shared. I'm going to share it. Um, Harvard used it. Um, I actually went. I um, uh, I I actually went to some folks within my previous company where we have like PhDs in statistics. No, um, always, always helpful. Just hey, down the you know, walk down the hallway. Here you got a PhD in stats, um, and who actually said that for the application that they were using it for, it was a perfectly reasonable measure. Um, you have to be careful because any metric and measure, you, know, you always have to ask, and what are you doing that for? <laughs> but the, the, the reason to use the Z scores in the Harvard study, and I'm not sure it makes sense here, is that they were combining data sets from multiple different organizations. Um, it was very, very important and the different organizations data sets were of different sizes. So saying, hey, you're number one or you're number 10 um, is not the same thing when you have a large data set versus a smaller one. 
Nevertheless, they wanted to combine the data sets in a way that handled different data sizes and they needed to not reveal the raw scores to anybody else. Hmm. So the, the, the key thing that's is that's why the Z-score, the Z-score yeah. is used for compression usually, but of a wide range, but you're saying it was also to conceal the actual real values. That's right. Conceal real values, but create a common measure that was not sensitive to the size of the data sets. Other than yeah. obviously, if you're not, if it's not in the data set, you can't say anything about it, but. Right. Um, no, I mean, the, yeah, that's what we've used these scores before. For, yeah. Now I um, don't understand the metrics being used here. How many other projects and libraries? So this is the downstream dependencies, and there was a. In the, the, so in the accumulation of that discussion, that's where the Z scores came in, and so. How many other projects? And we we struggled. Now I am remembering this. We struggled with this question. Um. I mean, you don't really care how many for you want to know its relative mm -hmm. merit, but that's only if you're trying to do an analysis to answer questions like, who am I going to pay? Um, it, it was also on the reputation side. If something happens to my project, how I'm going to affect others as a being a member of that ecosystem or how critical is my project if I do something wrong? And right. like bunch of thousands of projects which are using my project as a critical project. Happens they become that. really unpopular crazy fast. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What? Why? Why are we measuring this? Well, we have we have because David we have upstream dependencies as a metric, and we thought it would be good to measure downstream as well. Um, right. I, I I will <laughs> tell you the the problem with downstream dependencies and Harvard hit this in spades. Um, you don't know uh, them all. Well, no, it's like, well, you don't, but the, the big, that, that's yes, true. You can't know them all technically. I mean, it's like, there's always well, some, you, you, some you person in Russia who didn't tell you they cloned it. Well, first of all, at best you can know like, like from public data, but you won't know about the, all the proprietary uses. Exactly. There's a bigger challenge though, which is not all of those dependencies matter. In other words, A depends on B, but no one uses A either. Oh, okay. Um, now, uh, there's two solutions to that. One is admit you don't know and move on, which is originally how I was going to do the analysis. Harvard said, you know, that's an important problem. So we're going to use the SCA vendors to tell us what you know to tell us what's actually in applications that people you uh, pay to analyze and use and then that's what the z-score came from um the problem there is really then what's this um i yeah i you know i don't know who can most projects are not going to be able to do this metric then I'm trying to figure out what you're trying to accomplish with this metric. Who's using this and why? I'm already skeptical. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm poking, yeah. poking in and I wasn't here it's, last week. And now let me shoot down what you've been working on. I'm sorry. No, sorry. No, I mean, I think, no, that's fine. Thank I mean, I think part of this emerged from the discussion of the census report, too. And OK, uh, now I was actually I actually developed um, what we called the uh, census two strategy. Mm -hmm. So we, we um, it's actually a public, that's actually a published document by Ida. My name's, you know, I wrote it um, where we attempted to do measurements like this. Uh, that was uh, Harvard then used that and other stuff built on things. And then that's where the actual census two came from. Uh, we, we did some prototyping. We didn't try to use SCA data. We did, we it turned, you know, and we had problems and challenges. We, we solved them. Turns out, by the way, doing this downstream dependency, ignoring SCA data is uh, non-trivial. Um, there's a whole bunch of ways to do the matrix calculation, to do the total, the transitive dependency. And most of them, 
take. Uh, we, we don't know how long they take because we stopped after a week. Um, so you have to be really, really careful about the order of operations where technically it doesn't matter, but it sure does if you'd like to uh, be there for the results. So did you, um, was your, was your SCA approach, you went all the way down the rabbit hole? Like you didn't All the way with the rabbit hole for public data only. Okay. So we, we did do this calculation. Okay. So how did you um, get all the way? So, so did you not end up going all the way down the rabbit hole? No, we went all the way down the rabbit hole. We get we actually got these counts, um, mm -hmm. and then we sorted them by the counts. The good news was you if you are very careful about order of operations, you can actually achieve them. Well, and you also have to have data sets. Um, one of the problems was that libraries.io isn't as maintained as as needed. Uh, Harvard mm -hmm. had this trouble as well. Um, I just came off a call earlier today where we're talking about maybe w there's a need for an, you know, a publicly maintained database of dependencies uh, across all the ecosystems. Um, that's not a, a guarantee, but that is something that's in discussion. So that Google would make has this... depth.dev, uh, uh, right? Yeah. How about yeah, that, uh... they have depths.dev. Yeah. Um, pretty good. Yeah, but if, they... if it was an API on that, that would be very useful. Yeah, but they, but what? It's caught you, you can do the, it's designed to do a query for a particular project, right? What they what we want is here is the repo of all the data sets, right? Yeah, what I my thoughts were that that with that search function that I could go through a repo, I could crawl a repo and make API calls to devs.dev if they had one. Right, right. Um, I don't, they may have a big table interface, although those tend to be expensive. Um, but, uh, but, but, but my, here's my point. Uh, I actually did, you know, I actually did do these calculations. It's possible. The big negative is that you don't weight them by what's actually used. And that turns out to matter because for a lot of ecosystems, there's a lot of dependencies, but nobody's calling the top. So that creates a problem. This Harvard did me, that, but then example. they waited it. Hmm? How, like how a you... depends on B, B depends on C. Nobody uses A, nobody uses B. You might think that C is important, but it's not. As long as it's only imported from A. As long as it's only imported. Well, as long as it's, no, not necessarily. If nobody imports A or B or C, then it's not important. Right. But if anybody imports A or B or C, then it's separately important, but not in that then, file. It's never executed. Is well, execution? No, 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 it does not. They did not try to do execution. They purely did static, <laughs> static uh, call. analysis, static, okay. you know, static analysis call through. Well, and you know what? The static analysis um, is still relevant because, you know, let's say that C is dependent on but never used by something mm -hmm. called that brings in A. That actually doesn't matter. Because if C becomes unavailable or is subverted, you're still doomed. You know, if somebody inserts a malicious attack in package C, the mm -hmm. fact that your C is never called is not relevant. You are still getting your data exfiltrated. You're still getting your files removed. You're still so, doing crypto mining. So why did you do static content and you you were looking at actual use you weren't concerned about the security concerns that you're describing now in the census too is that what you're saying okay i i um yeah I, i'm not communicating clearly i, I you're, you're asking questions it's okay. I, I'm, so, I'm so, so let me either no, no that's okay <laughs> no no i mean i i don't it doesn't matter where the fault is. Clearly, we're not communicating. So let me try another. <laughs> let me try another way. I'm just trying to I'm, understand. Right, right. And I'm, I'm clearly not communicating it. And if it's my and fault, I'm terribly sorry. I also if it's your fault, be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> if it's your fault, we'll beat you with a wet noodle. But okay. you know, hey, communication problems. Welcome to humans, right? I'm All sorry. right. Um, okay. So I was maybe I was trying to be a little too short. Okay. Um, at my previous employer. I did do this count. The way we did this was uh, we downloaded from libraries.io mm -hmm. all the data of every package and what its declared dependencies were. And by declared, I mean statically. In other words, somewhere it says it includes the other thing. Yeah. It, in in the very you know it it brings it in as a package dependency. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
then you can do the raw counts of things like how many other packages directly or indirectly bring in this one. And if you do it transitively, it's basically a big matrix operation. And uh, the mathematicians will tell you that um, uh, although matrix operations are actually um, ordered, there's a lot of ways you can do them. But as soon as you talk about how long it will take a computer to run, it matters how you do it. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So it's total. If, if the so answer did you, is. You, did you run SCA or you did to the, so that you could identify all the imports essentially. Um, when you say SCA, we downloaded this data from libraries. Right. And then you just okay. started the static analysis to determine. Okay, what no, no. Libraries.io did the static analysis. Oh, right, libraries.io okay. okay. is a database. Right. Yep. We no, I know. You yeah. read it. Remember the way we did it, Sean, for the like. I uh, do. Yeah. yeah. That it's no, it's not current enough, which is why we yep. stopped using it. Yep. Right. Okay. Um, now, uh, so, but we, we did the analysis of counting the, now we wrote a paper, we talked about, uh, the necessary necessity of doing it in certain orders. Uh, I keep emphasizing that because it's an easy, <laughs> this is one of those things that looks like it's impossible when you try to actually run the code. Um, the problem with that approach it, and we documented this as well, is you don't know if anybody depends on A or B or C. A depends on B, B depends on C, okay? Um, that means that your downstream dependencies um, for C are B and A, okay? Because C and B, A, B, A and B depend on C. But what that doesn't tell you is, does anyone actually use A or B or C? And if the answer mm. is no, then it still doesn't matter. And although I'm just using A, B, and C, there are nests where yep. you know, you know, somebody you know uploaded to NPM a whole bunch of stuff that they use personally. No one else uses it. No one else will. But you can get these misleading counts. Okay. What What would you um? What did you do for? Well, what? The, well, I didn't do this. Okay, this did, is. But the, did you did you take out the things that were never executed, or did you leave them in? Okay, well, you, you keep talking about. I keep saying executed. Uh, yeah, Don't say executed. There's no right. execution here. This is static right. analysis. We're looking at source code. If it's We're never called, declaration. If it's never called statically. Okay, it's not a static issue, and even the okay. the question. Okay, um, what's my brain? Why am yeah, I getting this? Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, if a import okay if a declares that it depends on b okay yep. and b yep. declares that it depends on c yep a simple that. count is going to include them yes yeah okay now let's go to the real world it turns out that no one actually uses a or b or c no one so your counts are misleading when compared to the real world. It's true that A and B and C are in the database, but but people stopped using A a long time ago. They stopped using B and, and no one else uses B or maybe a lot of people use B and C, but again, no one uses, nobody brings in B, nobody brings in anything that uses B anymore. It's dead, it's obsolete and people have moved on. So this this problem that you're describing, am I right that it would only occur if I wanted to do a very all quote unquote of some large ecosystem where That's A right. is never declared? Because well, A, A is never reported by by reported. by the real world. That's right. right. Yeah, you've, but, got, but, you've got a database of dependencies, so, and you have real world use. So in the in That's the chaos the in the chaos project, we would always be calculating using some collection of repositories as our opening salvo. Okay. Right, and that would so be that, the problem with that approach. Would be you're not taking into account the real world. That was the addition that Harvard well, did. But what I I think so I'm thinking of it from an so the census two report is was a sort of an ecosystem level report where in fact A could be in a package manager but never in, never used by any software in the world. That's, that's right. That's, and so if I'm in an OSPO, I'm not going to be scoping in things that none of my projects use. My scope is the projects that I have. And so therefore my opening is that 
I've got a set of things that I know are used because I care about these projects and deploy them. Ah, okay. You and, have a different data set than we have, obviously. Right. Well, it's it's. I'm just thinking of it. So from the perspective of an OSPO, though, there, we're not looking at the whole, like everything in a package manager, for example. That's not the scope of the analysis. It's here are my repos. Now go look at the package manager and find out what my what my what is dependent on my packages. If I'm looking at downstream dependency, what other what other things are dependent or import my my package that I deploy? I suppose the place where I could become blindsided or confused is if I think certainly somebody I'm I, I'm making the assumption that somebody somewhere is using my package. And if I am not in fact using my package, then I mean, so. Okay, so, by the way, yeah. you are finally getting to the answer of my original question is, <coughs> why, why are we asking this? And it sounds like the answer to your question is, this is a metric for an OSPO. Is that, is that I what think, uh, or, a, or a community manager. So anyone who wants to understand, yeah. I have a project and I have packages that I distribute. So, and this, I, I, but you're, you're, what is the scope of my, who's importing me? And so if I go, I guess like if I go and look at a package managing database like libraries.io or something similar, and I mm -hmm. don't see anybody using me as a dependency, then I would know that I'm, I've got no exposure whatsoever. So no. How, how hmm. about, let me give you an example. Like if you remember NPM left paid, right? That broke so many websites. And uh, yeah, and left, uh, left pad. Yep. Oh, yeah. So, so I, if I, I, if I have, want I, to assess the impact of like, if I want to assess the importance of left pad, like I can see how many uh, websites or other libraries are dependent on that left pad. And it'll give me the criticality of that left pad package or library. And I want to assess. So similarly, <clears throat> this is just an example. We can take any other. Yeah, many are not being used at all pretty much fine, agreed. But some are being highly used and very important to the uh, other uh, users. So the fact that I've imp I'm using the left pad, it was that a library inside of NPM? Yes. So if I'm using left pad, doesn't tell me how much of my application is broken is what you're saying just knowing I'm that I'm, if some yeah if, something if somebody's happens, using it if somebody's using it i really don't know the the degree of impact yeah. on any given project is what you're saying but i'm i'll get an assessment that okay, <coughs> thousands of projects are using it mm -hmm. so how important is my project give within an ecosystem in terms of my reputation so if I start with the package manager, then I, hmm, I don't know the impact. I'm just kind of back to, I wonder if our problem is the same as David's, because if I've got a package that I'm distributing, I am kind of assuming that it's being used somewhere. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it, at, at the topmost level, you know, like say React, Yeah. okay? Um, React may actually be a bad example, but, but uh, Okay, we know it's Becca, used, so as some right. We we know it's used. <laughs> that said, now I suspect actually this is a bad example because I bet if I looked in a database, I'll find a whole bunch of dependencies on it um, in the public database. But um, let, let, let me go with this, even though I think it's not quite accurate. Um, there are going to be some big packages that are widely used but are in fact at the top level. It's not that anything else in the public database depends on them. Right. And it's therefore that developers depend on them. Developers depend on them, but nothing in the public database depends on them. Um, mm -hmm. React, I'm not sure is is actually a valid top level, but it's that kind of thing where you developers will know right away, oh yeah, either you use it or you've certainly heard of React and Vue. Okay. Um, you've probably heard about uh, many other high level tools that you use directly. But it's not necessarily something the database would have a, um, hey, everybody uses me. 
because in fact the users are outside the data outside the repo database right now if you include a set of known packages that you care about like an ospo would that okay. problem go goes away so this really comes back to my original question of who is this metric for? Because <laughs> if you're if the question here is you're looking across the world worldwide, I think the Harvard approach is probably the better approach. But that doesn't but they have a very specific question. You probably don't have that question. It sounds like you're asking it on behalf of an OSPO. You said a community manager, although I don't know a community yeah. manager would would uh, have this. Maybe not. Really, anybody anybody that would be deploying a package through a package manager would probably have this concern, and probably nobody else would. So one of the things that came in the last discussion was like funders are also looking for the impact of the project. <coughs> so if a project has a high impact, they would likely to fund it to keep it maintained. Ah, so, okay. So if if that pro if they don't know the uh, sponsor they uh, don't know the impact of a project how they are going to sponsor or fund that project. If we add this as another section uh, to this document, like who the metric is for or might benefit. Yeah, I think we should. At, at least in this case. I, I think okay. sometimes it may not be necessary because it may be obvious, but I think in this case, how's this for speaking for just myself, it, it's not, it wasn't immediate obvious. Okay. <laughs> okay. So offices. Yeah. Okay. That deploy. Well, it, it's not really that, um, yeah, that deploy packages uh to determine and why are they why they want to know they want to know because they want to know which packages are especially important to them right to their organization which, which packages are yeah especially important to their organization as did yeah i mean i feel like oh. in, in a practical example i was working with a project that was interested in knowing what versions were still being used of their things to know what things to continue to prioritize support for or which one they think they can actually spin down but that was not a dependency that's more of a use so i think yeah. i think that's also part of the challenge here is that dependency can mean so many things <laughs> when, mm -hmm. one of the, when we were talking about upstream dependencies it was mm -hmm. we spent a lot of time and effort with our neurometric trying to limit our scope into something very specific because there can be very many non-specific things <laughs> and we're, even in this conversation we've kind of been Flooding in between software and package dependency as well as usage, which are, I mean, large, we're talking about different formalities. Yep, it's lar and that's largely been my fault because. No, I, 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 I don't, don't think it's a fault. I think it's just the nature of the topic. The, the topic is really general. <laughs> oh, okay, so so let me keep going because I think now uh, my my question is getting an answer, at least in my brain. Um, you know, an OSPO is going to have an advantage over somebody using libraries.io because they won't ha just have, oh, look, here's data from the public database about stuff in the package manager. They can know, hey, these are the projects that my organization develops um, and therefore will, you know, we don't just see the public repository, but here's all the stuff we depend on internally for all our projects here's all the projects that we use and contribute to mm -hmm. and so so you're you're going beyond just what's in the repo database that was my concern and also the concern of harvard was that if you only look at the repo database you you don't get how you get there if that makes any sense you have the interconnections within the re within the um public package repository mm -hmm. but not what parts of that lead you there Mm -hmm. But an OSPO could have that additional data set. And in fact, they might want to know it for their sets. And who cares what anybody else? You know, I am, I'm company X. And yeah, we're the only ones that use this package, but everything depends on it. Am I writing this down correctly? Yeah, I, I've had, I had an interesting conversation with a fintech 
a guy talking about a, a fintech organization and uh the way they use some systems is well different <laughs> and but they they basically have standardized on certain activities and certain processes leading mm -hmm. to use certain tools in a way that probably no one else does but it's critically important to them and noticing that wow every project uses x is this speed boys Wait. stuff <laughs> sorry is this speed boys stuff speed boy i don't that, know what that that's is, that's um that's the high the high the high velocity trading no book called speed no, boys. no 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 okay. no no this, this, this actually not that part but uh okay. Uh, a lot more of their mundane stuff. But, but the, the point was, my, my point though, was that I think this is true for many orgs. You know, you got a lot of specialized stuff that you use in house mm -hmm. and you probably over time have developed a way of doing things that has led you to depend on certain packages in a way that maybe is different for everybody else. But for you, this thing matters. Right, okay. Okay, you have now answered my question of who would use this and why. <laughs> okay yeah yeah now i understand the nature of that question much better sorry i have a really basic question so you yeah. mentioned you were taking notes where are you taking notes um i'm in the downs um do you see the screen i'm sharing oh in the metric it's the one in, that's in um, the metric gotcha. in the okay. metric yeah sorry yeah sorry it's like, I've i'm making all these comments devices. all these comments are on the metric i just put it back in the chat Thank you. Because I figured that's where it was important to have this context. <laughs> um, and my notes are really, honestly, they're mostly for my own future recollection of this discussion when we visit this metric another time. So with, with that scope then. Can, can, can I say within my scope? Yeah, scope of Question. interest or whatever, scope of um, I like responsibility. That. I would say scope of interest. Cone of silence, cone of interest. Can we say cone of interest? Oh, please don't. <laughs> okay. If you get the joke, you're too old. <laughs> yeah. It was, they they re-released that. <laughs> All right. So. And really, if I'm if I've got some a thousand repositories that are part of the ecosystem that my OSPO is keeping an eye on, I probably know which of those is in a package manager for distribution and which of them isn't, because a lot of a lot of packages, for example, are like distributed as Docker containers. And most of the package managers, um, most of the libraries.io style analysis that I've seen does not look at container level distribution <coughs> or of a container level package. It just looks at, you know, like things similar to what devs dot, depths dot dev looks at and what the census two report looks at, which are packages that are imported or used by other pieces of software. Right? Am I getting that right? Or did I go out of bounds again? I feel like it's, it might be just really <clears throat> dependent on the company. I yeah. mean, I'm thinking about this in construct of what I know about what we do. And it's, I think that everyone's going to do a little bit differently in terms of what you rely on as external <clears throat> imports versus what you copy internally. And then when you choose to re pull, re mirror, or pull straight from the package manager in an active build. So those are potentially three different places where things could be coming from. And also just thinking about all the different versions that, that might create in the process. Yeah. Um, so I'm just trying are, to think about how we what are the three? structure this. Well, just like, okay, so you depend on a third party package. You either call it directly or you can mirror it into something else and then call that. And then potentially now there's two versions of the same thing and this one can keep evolving and this is a version at a particular point in time. And then depending on what you need in relation to that, if it's a third, third, third party, then you might actually end up calling a package manager for an embedded dependency within the thing that you're calling. But 
now I don't know I'm trying to, to call it something that it it's really just depends on how you set up your architecture and what you bring internally versus rely on imports and active builds. So I, I don't know. I, this is this isn't really like necessary to write out in such detail. I'm just trying yeah. to recognize that if we're actually going to explicitly try to define it, that it's going to be either we have to say super general or we have to pick something very specific because yeah. it's going to look a little bit different in practice in every organization. I have to imagine. Okay. So By the way, I I don't think do we, Augur or Baturgy calculate this, do they? We do ups. We do calculate upstream dependencies, but this is downstream. Downstream, I know, I know, and I'm trying to think. Like, no, we We've don't. We've been talking do to, for more about downloads, mm -hmm. but downloads are flaky, and they don't actually, they don't actually give you a sense of use either. We've been looking at a lot of download metrics that mostly just provide the cadence of CI builds <laughs> more yeah. than anything, not an actual measure of usage. So we were looking at one that was basically just like this lumpy chart that was just like anytime you're going through a build cycle, it's going to make a bunch of calls, but that's not actually a level of usage. You have to look at that over time to see if it's yeah. or shrinking, but you're generally going to get a seasonality of calls or downloads that are potentially all coming from the same person or implementation. So yeah, should, the raw should, count doesn't mean anything. Right. Um, we're, we're, we should probably capture that briefly about why we're not doing that. Is that under implementation? I mean, we can just type text. Why we're not doing... Go. Yeah. Note, you know, note that this is not simply download counts. I'm going to write this in implementation, yeah. and then if we move it somewhere else, that's great. Um, uh, unfortunately, download counts can be misleading. A single. So these are the down. These are basically the download counts you would get from a package manager. Right. Like how many times has your, has your project been downloaded? And you're, yeah, that right. would get pretty skewed by all the CI stuff out there, wouldn't it? There, there you go. <laughs> yes. Uh, we, yeah. we, 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 and, and boy, we've seen that in spades. But not only does it get, it, you, you know, the most important measure uh, factor for that download count is, as far as I can tell, is how many people cache it well. It's basically a measure of who caches. Yeah. Because some of the CI systems are smart enough to not re-download on every CI build because they cache the results. Yeah, like PyPy, PyPy caches. If well, if... but the, but the problem the problem isn't PyPy. The problem is the individual CI pipelines. Right, right. Because the yeah. easy thing to do is not <clears throat> to cache. It's oh. slower, but it's the easy thing to cache the the stuff. You need to take extra steps, which people don't do. The default, and I could be wrong about this. Maybe we set it up like five years ago this way, but I, the default has always in Python seemed to me to be that if you already have it at the current version or the version that you declare, then it tells you that you your the requirement or dependency is already satisfied when you compile, or or do your pip install dash e dot or dot. Um, maybe I I don't I think that's the default for Python. Where it doesn't do that, but I don't. I can't speak to all other languages. Like I don't know what Go or Go does, and Java is a hairball. <clears throat> well, again, I don't think a lot of this is specific. It's not really specific to the language ecosystem, nearly as much to uh, GitHub Actions, Circle CI, Travis. You know the, the the various ecosystems and tools that do the CI implement CI pipelines. You know, Get Labs. Well, those are the tools that would sort of wreck the download as a useful metric. That's right. That's right. But yeah. but they're they're the ones that impact this whole thing. Right. I don't know. Candidly, Sean, those tools are wrecking a lot of other metrics tools. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know else has been doing this. I've been doing a lot of random queries of known bots against GitHub Archive, and the activity per bot is growing exponentially, where the activity per all actors is holding steady. And so, just like what, depending on how you're counting and what you're counting, unless you know you're filtering out all automated activity, it's just going to become increasingly more skewed to just activity counts, not human driven activity counts, because we are, we can't tell the difference. 
Sorry, that's is, a totally other problem, but I've, they've been mucking up my metrics lately. So. so most of the most of the non-human things that I've seen, not all, but most do have the word bot in the username. Yeah, but mm. then you're still like for so GitHub does add bot in some cases if it knows it's a bot actor or people add bot in the name. Some are just uh. known. But what if you have a script running from a human based account? Yeah, it's basically behaving like a bot, but it's it's coming it's, it's marked yeah. as a person. And <clears throat> I've only seen that like been able to identify those by filtering outliers. And I found a whole network of bot like activity coming from human actor accounts. <coughs> I can't count any of those things, <laughs> but again, yeah, that's that's not that's not this kind of count. I'm just saying that those tools are increasingly making raw GitHub activity metrics coming out of the API much harder to identify with a human or a specific kind of action. Okay, but not the problem of this metric. This metric has a no. other set of another problems. set of issues. <laughs> no, but of course you got my head thinking about that. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I derailed. I mean, I'll, yeah, it's not derailed. It's just, uh, I, my brain went off in another direction trying to contemplate all that and the, and the appropriate workarounds for it. Well, I'm gonna submit that as a talk idea and then one of the conferences coming up so I can share all the data that I pulled because I find it interesting and hopefully someone else will do something else with it. <laughs> Um, this, I feel like I, we are at where we were at the last time, only even more confused about what we need to do with this metric. <laughs> so actually, I, I want to put <coughs> a question to, to David, because this is what we had discussed as well, um, in terms of the broader, like who is using this and why are we even thinking about it? Um, right. Because it's given that it is kind of like a, a really, it depends whether or not this number means anything to you and how you counted it. Um, but we're also thinking about in the construct of creating a, better, more comprehensive view of dependencies in a risk, in a, sorry, in a metric model um, versus individual metrics would involve defining a few different kinds of metrics in their own dependencies of which having the inverse of upstream makes sense to have both sides of the tree, um, depending on how you're looking at it. I mean, a single point and thing, you have the things it depends on, the things that depend on it. Um, which gives you a more well-rounded view of all of the different ways that things can depend on each other. Um, and so if we were going to try to pursue a metrics model in the realm of dependencies, then it would most likely include this, in which case we have to define it. Um, and so I think we would have gotten to this point, even if we didn't start with it, but you can just feel free to disagree if you think that's not, that wouldn't have been covered in that kind of thing. I, I'm going to push back slightly against a phrase just because I don't, I don't like the phrase, but I, I um, more because I'm I, I'm afraid of overcomplicating things, which is easy enough to do. Uh, metrics model makes me think of complicated things, so and I I, 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 I think simple. all we yeah exactly. I, I think all we need to do is answer the question, you know, instead of here's a metric, it's a what is this metric useful for, and then here's a metric. As long as the metric has a use, if that's not your use, you ignore it. If you say, hey, I have this problem, well, here's a metric for you that'll help you. I, you know, if, if, if that's what you mean by metrics model, uh, we, so, we can agree that the goal is to make sure we know what, why you would want to measure something. So the metrics models are really simple accumulations, not of, of chaos metrics into forms that OSPOs, uh, community managers, other people engaged in the project would ordinarily use. So <clears throat> I know at several different companies that use Augur, there's different standard sorts of dashboard thingies that they use. And all right. we're trying to do is define um, those types of things as metrics models. <clears throat> and, and so the question is, if we're looking at risk, if I want to understand the risk of, for a particular project in my portfolio, yeah, then do I Certainly I care about upstream dependencies because that lets me know about what things that I depend on I'm potentially vulnerable to because they're out of date or whatever. But downstream is sort of, it's like a, any company that produces open source software 
that other people use would have also this downstream concern, I would think. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and, I, and I can see two different things. One is an OSPO, you know, you're, you're trying to keep track of all the open source, um, you know, and, you know, because you're worried about basically what's showing up in the projects that you're that your organization <coughs> yeah the second one is a financial you know uh you know know the imp importance and impact is is point three yep i mean it's a project team which wants to know which versions of their saw oh now you have to do it per version which is not the same thing per space version please <laughs> <laughs> Eng because English. <laughs> I feel like you were in the middle of a thought, David. Where was I going? Oh, I just I was noticing that uh, you have different uses, and the set of what's import of what's in scope may differ. Yes. Agreed. I'm not sure, for example, if they're questioning of, of who uses me in the great grand world, um, I can see why you want it. I don't know how you get it. <laughs> hmm. I think for an OSPO, I can see, and, and, you know, I, and I acknowledge that, hey, you can tr define a metric that you want and then separately think about how you accomplish it but i i think we should at least try strive to only define metrics that you can actually use <laughs> well it's yeah. you can use them but i think it's it's a to your point it's severely it depends on the model you've set up because i can't think of an example where there is more active downstream collaboration but it's done through a very curated community so there is a feedback mechanism from right. the however many vendor products that are dependent on a particular architectural change. You might know what project I'm talking about right now, but <laughs> just in the sense of like there has there has to be some sort of mechanism to understand what's in use and how it's being used. So if there are any sort of major changes to the technical architecture of the project that have supply chain issues or downline issues, then you need to have a better understanding of how things are being used and what's being used and so it might it might be have to be more informal like the problem is i feel like most of the real applications of this are direct contact they're not something you can pull from an existing system unless you design a system specifically for it when you say direct contacts what do you mean customers that pay or or just people <clears throat> like you know it's a network of partners or yeah. other contributors that you have you have a community with and you can yeah. reach out to and see how this is being used. Like we're we're going through this with other projects right now and predominantly relying on surveys. Um just because we don't really understand usage out once it gets like again, like you can tell whether or not there is or is not usage, which is binary, not a volumetric component. So to have any sort of nuance of what components of the project are more like useful <coughs> to be prioritized or not, we're mostly leaning on surveys as a way to provide open feedback to areas of focus but that's not that's not a very scientific approach or so, sorry i shouldn't say scientific but in a repeatable it's a limited approach yeah and it, it requires a specific initiative versus i could just use a package manager yeah. to query against which is just an available data set that anyone can use but let, let me go back to your earlier point about you've got an established community in at least some cases in that case i think you do you're okay you know as long as you're able to scope it out to a cooperative community or you know then you're okay it's that general world class that's hard yeah yeah great <coughs> i guess you could always say the 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 set is the world and then uh somehow i will i will spray magic pixie dust to solve that <coughs> yeah also just thinking of the like the worst case scenario like left pad of we, we turn it off and then the internet goes nuts at you <laughs> it's a pretty good measure of how often it was used yeah at the end of the time yeah we are i'm over time in fact and i have to go teach well I, as I, I i added a link to the uh the sample Oops. code that we did so it, it's in there in the in the notes 
No, in the uh, you know. This in, is in, the source in the in the uh, this, text. In the the PD, text for the the PDF or no the uh, is it the, the sample oh, document we've been editing the sample yeah. document we've been yeah that is the Z score is this the Z score link or is there a different no. link no this is for the actual counts that would be is it one of these down here e, where did I put it Craig it no it's, not no, it's under tools what happened to it I don't. Yeah, there is a on the end of the. Oh, there piece. it is, right there. Yep. yep. Oh, you have to put a space and then. Yeah. Okay. Thank Boom. you. Appreciate it. All right. All right. <laughs> it's unmaintained, All right. but you know. Anyway, we can talk <coughs> later. All right. That's, thanks, everybody. Um, Thank you. Bye. Wild discussion today. Thank you. Yep. Bye.